the sights and sounds of summer take me back to my childhood when I was privileged to spend almost every summer with my grandmother who lived on the family farm in South Texas. Oh, the watermelons would ripen and the grain would ripen in the field. And my grandmother was very crippled with rheumatoid arthritis. So I think she enjoyed having me around as much as I enjoyed being around her. We talked a lot. We wrote letters. We would go shopping. But she walked extremely slowly. She was in a lot of pain. But she appreciated having me there because I could run little errands for her. You know, whether it was carrying the dirty laundry to the washing machine or maybe cleaning up the dishes after lunch. And nothing was too hard. And I appreciated the fact that she appreciated me helping her because she'd make a big to-do over it. One time when I was about seven or eight, she said, if you will take my shoes to the closet, I'll dance at your wedding. I had never heard that phrase before. I'll dance at your wedding. Now we went to a very traditional conservative church. We didn't do dancing. I had never even been to a wedding. But the idea of my grandmother, my crippled grandmother dancing, that just sent my imagination reeling. I said, really? really? I called her Marnie. Marnie, you'll dance at my wedding if I do this? And she giggled and said, well, of course. I gladly did the task anyway, but I love the idea of my arthritic grandmother being able to dance. And so I held that image. What if, what if I did this for her? What if really she could get well? And, and what if she could walk faster? And what if she felt better? And what if she was never in any pain again? Well, by the time I finally got married in 1995, Marnie had been dead a long time. And, uh, you know, as things would have, there, there was no dancing at our reception. But I like to think that maybe she was watching over that ceremony and dancing in heaven, fulfilling a promise.